Hi, and welcome to Cross Corporate Zoology. My name is Carrick St. Laurent. I am a student of anthropology at New Hampshire's Plymouth State University, and I have been running this channel for about two years at this point. I've realized recently that I've wanted to start doing lectures, and I believe that the format of the online lecture will be a sufficient platform to add something to cryptozoology which I think is very important and that is uh, an objective scientific view. Um, to clarify, that isn't to say that I don't think that there are cryptozoologists who do have this objective point of view. However, I think the field tends to be very lacking in that subject. And I believe that these lectures, which I've been inspired to make by the late great John Bindernagel, who was a wildlife biologist deeply involved in Sasquatch research, um, I believe that these lectures ultimately will be very beneficial to the field and at least educational to those who watch them. Without further ado, I'd like to announce this lecture as discussing the recent Yeti tracks uh, allegedly found by the Indian Army in Makalu Barun, which is a mountain range close to the Himalayas. Now, the thing about it is, well, first off, I'd like to name the presentation. The Yeti Trackway of Makalu Barun, a re-evaluation of a case written with fallacious analysis. Now, what I mean by fallacious analysis, or by fallacious analysis, my apologies, is that both, uh, both people involved in the field and not involved in the field have really written off this recent find. And I think that it deserves far more examination than it's been given. I would even argue that the conclusions being reached are indeed fallacious, in the sense that uh, without proper examination, conclusions have been reached prematurely about this alleged find. Here we have the original tweet from the Indian Army, and uh, it describes how the find was located and what date it happened on. For the first time, an Indian Army mountaineering expedition team has sighted mysterious footprints of the mythical beast, the Yeti. My apologies for paraphrasing, there is, of course, as expected, broken English in this. Measuring 32 by 15 inches, close to Makalu Base Camp on the 9th of April, 2019. This elusive snowman has only been sighted at Makalu Baru National Park in the past. To clarify as well, what they mean by sighted only is not that this alleged specimen has only been sighted in Makalaburu National Park, but that in the area of Makalaburu National Park, there have been no uh, pieces of hair samples, no trace evidence ultimately aside from this found. Only sightings have come out of the area. A very interesting tweet for sure, and one that was met with a great deal of backlash. But before we get to that, I would like to actually show you the photographs of the prints that were, um, that were discovered. Here we have a close-up of the prints. The V pattern we're seeing here uh, are the cruise tracks, the expedition crew, and the prints that lead right across them and over the opposite hill are allegedly the tracks of this Yeti. They're very interesting tracks, and they're a bit boot-shaped, which is quite interesting. Here we have a bit more of an aerial view. This is actually a cropped picture, and I will show you the full picture in a moment here because that's actually quite uh, important. I was discussing these pictures with my colleague Nathaniel Brislin from the Association for Cryptozoological Fieldwork and Analysis recently, and we pointed out that this is quite a good photograph because it actually shows a massive stride on the subject. If we are to take the Indian government's word that this track is approximately 32 inches long, that's about two and a half feet or so. And there's about two feet in between each stride, if that's the case, uh, in between each track, my apologies, uh, which is quite a long stride, really. Now, the importance of this being a cropped picture is that we had seen the original picture, which is this. I've edited it now, but this was the original picture roughly beforehand. And it would seem that the cruise tracks vanished over this hill, which we, we found quite suspicious, quite frankly, until we realized that off in the distance, there were, in fact, more tracks of the crew, which seems to show that their path was something like along the lower area, past this tree, up over this hill, and running perpendicular to these alleged Yeti tracks. I would also like to mention that there is a particularly good track in this, uh, in this trackway. 
that has great detail. Again, it's very boot shaped, very human shaped, and even shows us some toe definition from a distance, which is quite, that's rare to come by, especially in these conditions. Here are some more accurate measurements of the tracks themselves that the crew did. As you can see, there are uh, snow ski poles that have been placed in between the tracks. Um, it, it should also be noted that the tracks seem to be old. They've seen to have been there for about two or three days, I would argue. Now, I'm no tracker, but um, depending on the weather conditions, obviously, it seems they've been there for more than at least 24 hours. Again, I am not a tracker, but that does seem to be the case here. They do seem to at least have been snowed in at some point. Again, the ski poles demonstrate that the tracks here are quite long, and there is a humanoid shape to them, which is quite interesting, I would say. What is perhaps most interesting about these tracks is that they have a very linear, straight pathway. And that's not something that we see very much in the animal kingdom, ironically, aside from uh, alleged Sasquatch tracks of North America. Here we have a trackway from Sunny Slope, Washington in 2017. As you can see, again, a very straight pathway, as opposed to the human pathway beside it, which is admittedly more messy than the average pathway. We also have these found near Sinbar, Washington in 2012. And again, very linear, very straight path here. These are also two more examples from Utah and Massachusetts. Utah is on the left, Massachusetts on the right. Again, we see this many, many times in Sasquatch tracks. These are all tracks which have been not proven to be hoaxes thus far as well. Now, this was an interesting thing. I want to preface this by saying I sh I'm trying not to show any disrespect to Lauren Coleman here. I have a great deal of respect for his long career and his work. Um, that being said, I also encourage open discussion in this field and uh, open criticism. And, well, I think that this would be a good starting point for that. Lauren Coleman posted about the tracks on Facebook. These are the line of so-called Yeti prints found on the 9th of April 2019 in Nepal. But the closer we look, it becomes obvious that the stride is small and the large prints are impressions in the snow, left by the sun melting and merging smaller prints together. The Indian Army measurement of 32 inches by 15 inches per individual Yeti track is a confusing piece of information to give the media. Well, I mean, he isn't wrong in saying that it's a, it's a confusing piece to give the media, for sure. Um, the problem is, is that it isn't confusing because these are melted prints that are not those of a large mammal, and we'll, we'll discuss why. For one thing, I'd like to discuss uh, the location these were found at. They're marked as being found near Makalu Base Camp. The Makalu Base Camp trek, as you can see here, and I quote, ascends to some high altitude points. At its highest point, Makalu Base Camp, you will reach an altitude of 4,800 meters or 15,750 feet. There are steep sections on this trek where you will ascend very rapidly. Now, again, keeping in mind that these prints were found near this base camp area, the highest point in the Makalu uh, base camp truck, keeping in mind the elevation as well, we're going to look here at this chart which demonstrates the melting point of snow, roughly speaking, uh, and the altitudes that happen to correlate with it. So let's see. We're looking at about 15,000 and a half feet, closer to 16,000, but we'll call it 15,000 and a half to be generous here we see that the temperature goes below freezing at about 8,000 feet. Now, the thing about snow is that it melts usually due to not just warmth, but also the moisture that it forms in the air when it gets that warm. But when it drops below freezing, and yes, in Fahrenheit, in Fahrenheit you won't see snow melt. It just doesn't melt. Now, that isn't to say that there couldn't be temperature fluctuations in the area and things like that. Um, but it doesn't happen very often, and at an altitude of almost 16,000 feet, with a temperature of about 1 degree, it's nearly impossible for these tracks to have melted into larger shapes, like Lauren Coleman suggests. So, melting is impossible. That doesn't mean that these aren't craters formed by a smaller footprint. Hard snow with a sheet of ice over it, a very thin sheet of ice, will usually 
fracture more upon step, and usually what that does is it causes a larger imprint than the foot actually is. That is a possibility, but the melting is not one. It is too cold for that. So we can erase the possibility that these are, and I quote again, large prints that are impressions in the snow left by the sun melting and merging smaller prints together. That is not the case. I would also like to address the notion that this is an animal that we already know of, a quadruped of some kind, that lives in the Himalayas. Um, and we're going to look at the, the few mammals that do traverse the Himalayas quite often, which are snow leopards, bears, and people, roughly speaking. Um, these are not the tracks of a snow leopard. And they're not the tracks of a snow leopard because, as you can see on the screen right now, snow leopard tracks have characteristics that just don't match up. The most important one, and this will become very important, is the, the sway in this track. Unlike the Yeti trackway, it's very... it has a straddle to it. It kind of goes back and forth, left and right quite a bit. Although it's very narrow because cats tend to walk very narrowly. There's also toe... Uh, sorry, not toe... tail drag marks in between each track. And they're also quite round and not in close enough proximity to each other to form what Lauren Coleman theorizes is the big track out of the smaller ones. So it's not the tracks of a snow leopard. I'm even going to pause it, as you can see here, that these are not the tracks of a quadruped. Because again, these are black bear tracks, and there are bears in the Himalayas. And in fact, quite popularly, there is a notion that yetis are bears, and we're going to talk about that in a bit as well. As you can see, there's still a straddle to this trackway. And it's closer together, but the other problem would be there then, well, why is the stride so large? And again, we've covered the stride is quite large. Um, the bear tracks do not match up with this kind of track either. Nor even do human tracks. Although they have the most bet fit appearance, there is still, once again, this heavy straddle that we see. This back and forth, left and right swaying motion that the tracks in the Himalayas do not have. And as you can see here, they're very straight, very narrow, there's no drag marks, there does not seem to be any irregularity, and the stride, once again, by measuring these prints, is quite long, actually. And that brings us to the point made by uh, the Motherboard News Network. There was actually an article about the New York Times, or I believe it was either the New York Times or the New Yorker. Um, the, the article name was something like, um, the Yeti prints are most likely, in quotes, definitely bears. I would also like to posit very quickly that, um, as a professional news source, we would like to see more professional titles rather than something, quite frankly, that a, a high schooler would, would name. I think that there are much better writers out there who may share the same opinion, but um, who are less childish in their writing. And this is the same thing that we're encountering here. And the problem isn't just that it's childish, it's, it's that it's childish for a reason. And it's because it's very unanalytical. The uh, article says, the Yeti footprints found by the Indian Army are probably just a bear's. And in quotes in the bottom here, you say, any reasonable person can see these are melted prints. Well, quite frankly, any reasonable person, as we've covered already, can see that these are too high up to be melting prints. It's too cold for the snow to melt. And we can also see the disparities and the differences between the bear track and the Yeti track that would simply make this impossible to be a bear track. Even if these were smaller prints, which they could very well be, that only means that the stride between each print is actually longer, making it more difficult to explain, not easier. So they're not probably just the bears. In fact, they're almost certainly not bears. And any reasonable person can see that they're not melted prints. And that would again erase the possibility that we're looking at um, short strides or melting prints. The truth of this would ultimately be uh, these are the line of so-called Yeti prints found on 9th of April 2019 in Nepal. The Indian Army measurement of 32 inches by 15 inches per individual Yeti track is a confusing piece of information to give the media. And yes, it is confusing because it posits quite a difficult problem. We're not looking at a known animal, it would seem. And we're not looking at somebody faking these with prints either, because if you're wearing very large wooden feet, let's say, you're going to have a very difficult time making a four-foot stride. That would be very difficult indeed. Now, I'd like to end this off with saying that uh, I am not saying that these are the trackways of a Yeti. I would also like to posit, though, that this is among, and it should be regarded as among, 
the tantalizing evidence for the existence of a species of Himalayan ape and should not be so easily written off. Uh, and there are other examples that we can include in this collection. There is the account of a witness who, when he was young, traveled to an American zoo, and uh, he would see animals that he had never seen before, zebras, bears, and he recognized bears. What he didn't recognize was the gorilla, and he believed that they were yetis when he first saw them. This account comes from, or at least is documented in, a National Geographic documentary. There is also the evidence of the Cronin tracks, which were discovered in the mid to late 20th century in the Himalayas, and they have yet to be explained away by the witness's credibility or otherwise. And we also have the recent identification of Denisovan bones, fossils I should say, in the Himalayan region. These were discovered I believe around 10 years ago and they've just been identified as Denisovan. Now, I know not much about Denisovans. Um, basically speaking, they are a species of hominin that we don't know much about. Uh, and now we know them in the Himalayas. I want to clarify, I'm not trying to posit that Yetis are Denisovans or much like that. I am suggesting, though, that we know, not just from us, but from Denisovans now, that there were primate species, very major primate species, living in the Himalayas at some point at considerable altitudes. Something interesting to posit for the existence of the Yeti or any other Himalayan ape. Ultimately, I would like to finish off by saying that the Yeti tracks recently found by the Indian Army are not worthy of the ridicule that they've received and are rather worthy of some very interesting analysis uh, that I hope that more people in the field begin to give them. Again, there is no disrespect meant to anyone in this video. I'm simply suggesting that we begin to take closer looks at such possibly significant discoveries as this. That will be all for the lecture today. Thank you very much for watching.